loose structures, more specifically uh, drawing the loose structures for compounds containing second row elements and hydrogen. And to do so, we can do so by following the three easy steps laid out here for us on the right side of our uh, uh, slide here. Let's take a look at them and then we'll do a few examples. Step one, calculate the total number of valence electrons in the molecule or ion. And in step two, we're going to need to determine the central atom of the molecule or ion, and that's usually the least electronegative atom. And uh, if you recall, we covered electronegativity extensively in the periodic table lecture series. Thus, should you require further information on the electronegativity, uh, you can watch that lecture at any time. Now, in step three, we're going to go ahead and just draw the diagram for the molecule or ion. And there's a few points uh, that we should take note of. Firstly here, a, as it says, a hydrogen atom always forms one bond and hydrogen is always a terminal atom in uh, a Lewis diagram. Secondly, sum of all bonding electrons and unshared pairs for atoms in the second row of the periodic table is never greater than eight. However, atoms may have fewer than eight electrons as we had seen uh, with uh, boron. All right, let's follow our steps and do a few examples here of uh, for drawing Lewis structures. And uh, we'll begin here with the uh, H2O molecule, water molecule. Now, if we recall, we had previously uh, stated that the uh, a representative atom, or a uh, or we can say a main group, excuse me, a representative or main group element, has uh, the same number of valence electrons as its uh, group number, right? Therefore, the, each of these hydrogen atoms should have one valence electron, as hydrogen is a main group one element, and oxygen, being a main group six element, should have. Uh, six valence electrons. And as you see here, we have a total of eight valence electrons, right? One for each hydrogen and six for the uh, oxygen as such. Now, next, so that was for step one. So for step two, we're going to need to determine the central atom of the molecule or ion, and it's usually the uh, least electronegative atom. However, for our example, we also stated down here that hydrogen is always a terminal atom in a Lewis diagram, right? So we know that the uh, oxygen is going to be the central atom in this example. And the uh, valence electrons, as you see here, they're always organized into electron pairs as such. And uh, the hydrogen, well, we know that the hydrogen always forms one bond, right? But besides the hydrogen, we need, uh, we're going to set up the octet configuration for the oxygen, as you see here. And the oxygen forms two bonds, right? One here and one here too get that octet configuration. Now, once we've satisfied steps one, two, three, and we have that octet configuration for our necessary atoms, then we can go ahead and replace the uh, the shared electrons between two atoms, that, that being, for example, between uh, the oxygen and the hydrogen here, with a single straight line for the covalent bond as such. And the resultant Lewis structure for a uh, water molecule is as follows. Now, next, uh, let's do the Lewis structure for a carbon dioxide uh, molecule here. We know that carbon is a main group four elements and have four valence electrons. Each oxygen atom is going to have six valence electrons for a total of 16 valence electrons, as you see here. Now, how, uh, if we, we, although the answer is given here, if the answer is not given here, how can we determine whether oxygen or carbon is the central atom? Remember, it's the one that has the least electro, it's the one, the central atom is the one that's the least electronegative atom. And if you recall, this slide here is from our periodic table lecture series when we talked about electronegativity. We stated that electronegativity increases going up a group and it increases going across a row on the periodic table. Now, if we take a look, we see that we have, uh, we have carbon right here and we have oxygen right here. And we see that oxygen is going to be more electronegative. Therefore, uh, carbon is going to be the central atom. Okay. Now, if we go back one slide here, we see that we see that that is why our carbon is our central atom. Now, to obtain that octet configuration, right, the carbon here is going to need to make uh, to, it's going to need to form four bonds, right, while the oxygen it forms two bonds, resulting in uh, two double bonds between a, a, the oxygen and carbon here and the carbon and the oxygen here as well. And the final structure for the carbon dioxide molecule is as follows. Now, next for hydrogen cyanide, we know that hydrogen forms uh, has one valence electron, 
we know that uh, the carbon has four valence electrons, and we know that nitrogen has five valence electrons for a total of, uh, it doesn't say here, but this should be a total of 10 valence electrons as such. Now, to uh, let's now uh, let's go ahead and determine in step two, right? We need to determine the central atom, and as it says here, it's usually the least electronegative atom. So we see here that uh, carbon and nitrogen, with their positions on the periodic table, we see that uh, carbon is to the left, and it's going to be uh, it's not as electronegative as nitrogen. Thus, carbon is going to be our central atom. So if we come back here. Now we see that carbon is our central atom. Now we know that the hydrogen, the hydrogen is just going to, hydrogen always forms one bond, right? Thus the hydrogen is going to form that one bond with the carbon as we see here. Now in order to achieve that octet configuration, the carbon and the nitrogen are going to need to form three bonds as we see here, which is going to result in a triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen and the uh, resulting Lewis structure for the high, for hydrogen cyanide is as follows. Okay, let's proceed now to our uh, to our next slide here.